Today I will be showing you how to build the MLS or the moon landing system and if it looks a little bit like the NASA's SLS well that's no coincidence this ridiculous craft is heavily inspired by the NASA SLS because it also costs an arm and a leg to build and it's a wonderful example of the Kerbal engineering yes and this one has taken Filtless Kerman and Radoslav Kerman all the way to the surface of Moon and back. If you have missed that video, do check out the comments below as they will be linked. However, let's get onwards to the build. This is only the build episode. So we're going to be starting with the uh, landing pod Mooner Excursion Module or the MEM. And on top of it, we're going to be putting the Splash Liquid Engine, which is just a tiny engine, but it will provide a pretty decent Delta V, 995. And that's more than enough to circularize and rendezvous with from the moon. Having said that, I want to put a decoupler below it. And why does it look like crap? Um, I have no idea. I think I need the thrust plate or the engine plate below it. Hold on, let me just quickly check. Oh, there we go. I'm looking for an engine plate. And then we put an engine below it. Good. And now, hopefully, it will be looking normal. So, uh, no, come on. I don't want that shroud. I want a normal shroud. So let's just make sure that we put the correct variant. No, we need a single variant. And, ah, yeah, that's it. We have to go to the node that's provided by the engine shroud, not by the engine. Got it. All right, fair enough. Now let's go and put another decoupler and let's put another, maybe a bigger engine. Hold on, let's see, do we have like this guy? And then we can put the real terrier engine. This is for the thrusting down. So this one will be going downwards. And I think these landing legs, these wide landing legs are perfect for the moon landers because they are kind of wide and they're stabilizing enough. Hold on, I didn't put them in the correct angle. Yeah, let's see, if we put it like this, oh, this will be perfect. This will be like a real NASA's lunar lander. I mean, it looks so cute. All right, but we have to jam pack it with experiments. After all, the backside has to be so loaded that it can use its nothing for pencil. Now, all of the experiments, we're gonna just cram it as many as possible. Yeah, it looks amazing. Come on, let's just cram them one at the time. Hold on, RPWS, data camera. I can actually flip the data camera somewhere like here. And then I could do, let's see, can we cram more? I mean, I need this guy, magnetometer. I'm gonna put it somewhere. Well, this looks but ugly, so I don't think I'm gonna be placing it here. Let's see, can we place the solar panels? Well, the solar panels might be better off in that position because yeah, they might be impacting stuff. So maybe solar panels, I'm gonna go with the smaller ones. We, we're gonna put a single battery. After all, I don't know how much battery it has. So maybe I should go with the double symmetry of the battery. Yeah, actually, that might actually make sense. So we'll see. However, let's see what can we can do. Now we're gonna be placing another mystery goo. Mystery goo is gonna be placed here. And let's put the magnetometer boom and RPWS. I haven't found a good place for you, buddy. Let's see. Can we go do a photovoltaic panels one by six? And I think that's going to be fine. And let's see if it makes sense to put like plasma infrared spectrometer and the plasma. Okay. These got to be moved a little bit so they don't they don't crash with everything. Okay, extending the solar panel, plasma science experiment. Good. I mean, science-wise, we are progressing quite nicely. We are having metric crap ton of experiments. And I want to be putting a communitron antenna. Where where can I put it? Hold on. Is this foldable gonna work? I mean, for the moon it should, right? So we're gonna be placing that one. So the, that experiment is gonna go, and do we have any more? Let's do put two gyros on the side because they will be ensuring the SAS is moving correctly, fine. And what else do we got? We got ladders. So we're gonna be taking the ladders, we're gonna be placing two of them just to make sure that they can actually <laughs> land our kerbals safely down. I cannot be placing any more on this shroud. I don't know if whether I should, I should be able to. Well, I hope it's gonna work anyway, right. Now, 
that being said, do we have uh, another engine plate? I'm, I've actually rerouted the part so I can attach it and I'm going to put it as a sub, sub assembly. So Mooner Lander Mark 1, it's now a sub assembly which can be put on any craft. Now we're going to use the Gemini capsule for the whole mission because I do want to have two Kerbals in the pilot seat. So that will be like we said, it's kiltless and it's going to be Radoslav Kerman. We put an experiment pod or the experiment collection pod. I think it's called something like that. So that one and we'll, we're going to be putting also some uh, parachutes. We're going to be putting two radial parachutes, which will slow the craft down once returning from Kerbin after hopefully a successful mission. And then we are going to need a heat shield. So we're going to be placing the heat shield, which is going to protect it from the rigors of re-entry because it's going to come screaming at over 3000 meters per second. And um, it heat shield needs to withstand that. So 1.875, I think it's ideal measure because, uh, yeah, let's see, we can, can we put the service module? I was thinking maybe if I put like a cargo bay, then I could be putting the lander inside. But I think the lander is too big. It won't fit in this one. And maybe it's just an overkill. Let's see. I would actually like to have an additional yeah, cargo bay. Okay, cool. And the service bay, I would be able to place then some uh, tech life support supplies because we needed battery reaction wheels. I think we don't need. Uh, and uh, then and the solar panels. So all of these need to be able to go inside. So let's see, I'm gonna rotate this uh, little fella. I'm gonna put two cubic, a cubic strut, and then I'm gonna be placing the two panels. So let me just see quickly, hold on. I'm gonna be putting this little life support. Oh, it's 19 days. I would like a little big, bigger one, please. Yeah, that's 157 days and a small one for the waste. Those are tech life containers and they're going to ensure that our Kerbals don't starve or, or basically asphyxiate because they contain food, water, oxygen and well, basically, yeah, electricity we have the batteries for. So two solar panels, those once extended will be providing the recharge so that we can actually refill our electric charge. Good. And I'm thinking I'm going to want to put another fuel tank here, something like this. This gives us a total 2,400 Delta V. However, I don't know how much it will have Delta V once we... Oh, that, that one is not good. We need the Bobcat engine. But how much Delta V will it have if it has to push the Mooner Lander? It's gonna have... Okay... 1,397. That's good enough to get us to the Moon. Okay. I was a little bit worried whether or not it will be enough Delta V, but it has. Speaking of that, I forgot that the Mooner Lander should also have some food capsules, so I've decided to place them a little bit to provide enough food for our little fellow who is going to go down. I think it's going to be kiltless. I'm not sure. We'll take a, a voting flip. So having said that, we do have the uh, where is it? The engine plate, come on. Or actually, oh, hot staging ring. Do we want to do a starship? I don't know. Maybe it would be kind of cool. Now, let's see, what do we have? We do have, uh, I want to increase the size of this one, but it doesn't look good. Okay, this looks a little bit better, maybe. And uh, it just looks but ugly. Can I scale it somehow to be acceptable? No, it doesn't look fun. Do we have another cone? Yeah, this one looks much better. Okay, we're gonna get rid of this one and we are gonna go and let's say, now I want to be putting truss structure on and I want to make sure that I can construct a fairing. Now, interstage like this, cool. And we're gonna be placing it so that we can actually place the lander. So we wanna place the coupler at the bottom or, you know, uh, what's it called, stage separator or there we go, let's see. Can we now put the lander here? Yeah, we can. Okay, this is a little bit too close for my comfort, so I'm thinking maybe a single hop further. Yeah, so that we can drag the 
this one out now let's see let's construct the fairing we go a little wide and then a little bit more narrow there we go and then we close it okay that looks good however i want this rocket to look a little bit more sls like so i'm gonna make it orange yeah sls orange there we go although it has a big bump so actually it looks like a pregnant sls <laughs> sorry i don't know what came to me uh however let's see let's check our staging our staging looks correct so just a need, need some tweaks we want to do a clamshell deploy no i forgot to place that one yeah didn't i okay and let's put two hydraulic detachment manifolds and then we're going to be putting two boosters yeah, and I want these boosters to really give it a, an SLS-like feeling. I know that the bottom we have the mainsail rather than the SLS-like huge one, but uh, I think it looks overall pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, look at it go. Looks amazing, doesn't it? Now, we are coming to the harder parts, and the harder parts being uh, we need actually separatrons, we need the fins, now these parts are not entirely accurate to the SLS, but you know, a guy's gotta run what a guy's gotta run. So, uh, let's put the separatrons. Separatrons are kind of important because they're gonna ensure that we don't get too much Kerbal style on our craft. We do have two separatrons above and beyond, and those will be detaching our boosters and firing at the moment when the hydraulic detachment manifold fires. Oh, I was able to say that in a single sentence, go figure. Right, so everything seems to be fine, and uh, I'm just making sure that my staging is correct. We have plenty of Delta V, as indicated by our Kerbal Engineer Redux, and also, guys by, the way, guys, by the way, if you're watching all the way up till here, that means that you might probably like this video. And if you do like it, I would really appreciate if you would hit that like button just below this video. It means the world to me. And if you will be interested to see more videos, do hit subscribe. Okay, having said that, we are once again rebuilding the fairing, just making sure that the fairing is correct. And now we come to the hardest part, which is the launch pad. And I really wanted to take the Saturn V version of the launch pad. So we're gonna go with the Saturn launch base. I mean, that looks a little bit weird, but we're gonna rotate it, hopefully. Let's see if there we have a variant. Let's place a tower. Okay, this tower looks even more weird. Yeah, hmm. I'm not buying it. Let's see if we have a better version. Uh, maybe we have a tower base regular. Yeah, sort of like this. And let's rotate it to this side. Okay, cool. Now let's expand the modular structure upwards. There we go. Easy does it. Come on. One, two... It has to go all the way up, and at the top we're gonna have the elevator. Now, I've read that this launch pad can actually even have the elevator that will physically be taking Kerbals all the way up. I don't know yet how to do it. Guys, if you know of a good video that shows how you need to exactly connect this, do let me know in the comments below. I would be extremely thankful for it to you, because I couldn't find it for the life of me. However... There's a tower and everything. And now I want to be finding the crew connection module. And I think that's the one. Now, the question is, how do you attach it here? There is a crew quarter. So I'm kind of hoping that this will be fine. Now, let's see. How do I rotate it? Okay, so after some fiddling, I figured out how to attach it, and it actually looks kinda okay. Look, maybe if I take it further down. No, actually, I'm trying to find a good place where to put it. Yeah, nope. Okay, I think this is the correct height.
So after some fiddling I've decided that this is actually the best way to do it, but I was even trying to do the tower crew section, I don't know how to do it, so I was really trying to figure it out, but all in all I was unsuccessful. So. One eternity later, I have decided to actually get rid of all the bridges and just use this as is. You know guys, <laughs> I don't know how to set it up properly. If you guys know, do let me know in the comments below. Let's just put in the refueling arms and pods and then we're gonna be checking our staging and hopefully that sounds like that might be it. Let's see, what do we have? We do need these arms. I'm trying to find the right one that would seem just correct. And let me just quickly, oh, that one has been below. Yeah, they're, they're coming everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna be placing this guy and I'm gonna have another one like that, maybe a little bit higher up. I know that they're not connecting exactly. If you guys know how to connect them properly, do let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I'm actually new to this specific tower, so I don't know how to set it up properly. However, this looks pretty good to me. All right, guys, having said that, let's just put uh, action groups. And after that, we're gonna call it a day. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.